Kim, what's your experience with the the crystals and the information that they offer? Um, so when I, I look at the crystals and what I see is I see the being inside the crystal or the energy that it'll hold. Um, I have a um, one crystal that I picked up and, and bought immediately because when I looked at it, it's called uh, angel feather or seraphonite. Yes. Uh, it's a green and white and there was a dragon in it. <laughs> so it's like taking it because it's a dragon, right? So yes. it's it's not so much for the properties of the the crystal that I'm looking at. I'm looking at what the being is inside. Like I have a green calcite that when you look at it, it's either an alligator or a dinosaur. Right? Okay. So that's a very amphibious type of energy, which works, right? So every one of them, they all have something in it that right. it's not just the, oh, this is amethyst and this will help me heal and all that. No, I'm looking at it. It's oh, like, yeah. hey, do you guys see the shark? You know what I mean? <laughs> so. Well, even at my shop, you spotted a turtle. And to your point, so seraphonite, for those wondering, is uh, great for working with the seraphim. And uh, in my experience, dragons and seraphim, so dragons are angelic be beings. And so it's, that's, you're right in alignment again. <laughs> um, and I would say if you have a chance to buy seraphonite, go ahead and buy it. It's running, it's actually running out. Yeah, um, I actually have a nice piece. This is, this is my dragon. <laughs> so, so that's awesome. Yeah, that's, it made me think of when the librarians were talking about the seating and stuff. Is that why we have different type of uh, crystals, gems in different parts of the world because they were seated just all over and not in one place because sometimes you can only get a certain gem or crystal from one part of the world. Mm -hmm. Just like Larimar only comes from the Dominican, absolutely. Um, they're from different places, uh, but I'm sure that the librarians will also speak to the frequency and resonance. So there's more to the energetic process. It's going, the scientific process, I mean, is, is going to happen. It's going to um, come up and then there's gonna be the frequency of the planet. Like what are we doing to the planet? How is it being influenced? That will also shift and change um, the beings as they come up and they are beings because they're conscious as they grow. Yes. Indeed, this is, Again, correct, we had assumed we must teach this lesson to you, and here the student is educating the scholar. We are delighted. <laughs> yes, your law of magnetic attraction is quite literal with this process of planetary seeding, where once your planet was a great ball of gas and heat and space debris, we did not know when we assisted with the formation of your planet quite what would land where. There was a great, great scattering of seedlings of, of so much that was added in from representatives of every dimension and frequency. However, like is drawn to like, and resonance allows crystals to settle in a place. Then, because the purpose is not for divine connection to sit without connecting, the local minerals deposits the geomorphology, the terrain, the evolution of an environment will impact the crystals, so they become one with the third dimensional earthly space. Mm -hmm. This is in alignment with the final purpose of your planet to evolve to a physical place where all may connect and exist within their natural frequency. Wow. Yes, when your planet was being created, we were seeding with the thought that several billion years later, all who created your planet would wish to return and visit your planet. Wow. So I have a question um, regarding 
because we do have some man-made crystals that I mean that are from scratch, but we also have them, well, they'll take a crystal, we'll say, um, what is it? Uh, Your cherry quartz is one. Right, no, no. Um, when is it the one that goes from, it goes citrine to amethyst or amethyst to mm -hmm. citrine when they radiate it? It goes amethyst to citrine. Okay, does it change the properties when they do that? Indeed. To the actual cit citrine, or does it stay amethyst? No, no. No, so the forced evolution of any crystal should always occur with the crystal's permission. Otherwise, it is a violation, a raping of the natural being. So um, from, from my perspective, obviously, as a retailer, um, that, that question comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I always warn people when I have both natural and unnatural citrine, mm -hmm. uh, the, the one maybe light at the end of the tunnel is that citrine belongs to the quartz family. Mm -hmm. So you're not completely taking um, amethyst and um, taking it too far off its path. Natural radiation does occur for amethyst. It tends to radiate green, though, which is praseolite. Um, and what the market is doing now is also altering smoky quartz to get it to be like citrine. It's very hard to find natural citrine, and this is a great opportunity to kind of show you guys. I have both, um, both radiated citrine, and then the other variety is Congo citrine, and it looks like these guys. So um, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't a plug, but um, you know, you can kind of see they're a bit on the smoky side. And then here's like a, I'm almost sure that's treated, um, but it is a starberry citrine. So it has a star on it as well, but it's, it's all of that to say, it is hard to get natural citrine. So I think, and I wonder what the librarians take would be on what do you do if that's what you need or, or what is called for? Can you use it just with the intention of the work? As we said, the crystal should be willing. That does not mean all crystals are unwilling. Mm. Okay. Many crystals are willing. When one is resistant, you will feel that frequency. Then you would do what one does for anyone who is in trauma. You offer healing and caring. You help the crystal become self-empowered to reclaim their identity. You are a high frequency human. Therefore, you know when traumatized crystals are before you. And we are aware that you have healed crystals, that you have also exalted crystals, so they may feel quite proud of themselves. If a crystal is in trauma, Anyone with empathetic connection will be aware of it. Mm -hmm. If a crystal is not in trauma, then it has zero negative connection to anything that has occurred up till now. Irradiating or colorizing crystals is not the only time they may be traumatized. True. They are not signed in the shipping process. I can tell you that right now. They the just shipping, those bags around. <laughs> the digging them from the earth, forcing them from their crystal family, cutting a large, beautiful crystal into tiny shards. These may be traumatic or they may be exciting for the crystal. You must connect with the crystal and ask it converse with the crystal, they will always be honest. There are no liars 
among crystals. 